Welcome to this new 2D series where I will teach you how to recreate this game, which is called Seraph's Last Stand. And even though it looks really simple, it is still very fun to play. Let's get straight into it. So first I will add just some basic player and some environment. Obviously later we are gonna be adding the sprites from the original game, so that it looks the same. Okay, this should be good enough for now. Don't forget to add colliders to all of the environment objects. And to the player we will add also box collider 2D. We will add rigid body 2D. On the rigid body what we can do is go under constraints and just freeze the rotation on this x-axis so that the player isn't rotating. And then we can create script. I will add this script to the player and first we will make just some basic movement and then we will add the wand that the magician had and also some shooting function. So I have just added variables for the movement speed and for jump power. Now I will create another void in which I will do the movement. So void move. And we want to be calling this in update all the time. Then here I will create new float variable, which will be for the horizontal axis, which is the when you are pressing the A and D or the arrows. And I will multiply the input of the axis by the movement speed. I will also create serialize field variable for the rigid body. So rigid body, don't forget to have here 2D and this will be just rigid body. And when we are moving, we will just set the velocity. So rigid body dot velocity is equal and we will create new vector 2. And the first value will be the horizontal. And then the Y will just be uh, the current value, so we can just say rigid body that velocity that y. That way we are not actually changing the y value, and this works good just for some basic movement. Now we will do the jumping. I will do the jumping also in the move. So if we are pressing space, so input that get key down, and I will use the key code space but we also want to know if we are standing on the ground so for this I will create new bool new function of type bool and this will be pretty easy we just need to return the value of the bool if we are grounded and this will be just the physics raycast so we can do physics don't forget to have 2d here that and we can use the circle raycast which is uh, the same as if you would have just the collider in your scene. So circle cast and now we need to import some values. For the origin I will go back into Unity where I will just create empty object under the player and this will be just the place where it will cast the circle. So move it to the middle of the player and just move it down like that. So I will create variable for it. So the origin will be the transform that position. Then we need to have the radius. We can leave this on something like 0.1. The direction we can just use vector 2 that down. And I will also set the distance to 0.1. And then we will have the layer in which we want to detect the collisions. This is useful when you will have later the enemies, that way you can't just jump across the enemies. So I will just here create new layer and name it ground. And I will select all of the ground objects that I have here and I will set the layer to the ground. And then in the script I will create variable for the ground. So layer mask and this is the ground layer and put it here. So, if any collisions happen in the ground layer, we obviously can jump. I will just input here the function, so is grounded, 
and don't forget the parentheses. So when we are pressing the space and we are grounded, we can just set the velocity. So rigid body that velocity equals new vector two. And now it will be the same as here, just the other way around. So we want to keep the X the same. So we will use the rigid body that velocity that X. And then we need to change the Y for which I will use the jump power variable. And this should be all for the jumping. Don't forget to set the layer and the ground check transform. Yeah, and you can see that now the move on works. We can easily move from side to side and also jump. So now I will add some wand with which we will be able to shoot. So I will add it under the player, just some basic to the object and we can use the square. And we will want to rotate the wand. But uh, if we would have it just like that, that we would be actually rotating the wand object, it will be rotating like this, which doesn't look the best. So under the player, I will create another empty object, which will be the wand pivot. Just make sure that you have the wand pivot and the wand at the same position. So I will just set it to something like this and then copy the values to the wand pivot. And I will put the wand pivot somewhere here. And I will put the wand under the wand pivot. That way we will actually be rotating the wand pivot. So it should look uh, like this, the rotation of the wand, which I think is looking better. For the aiming and shooting, I will create new void. And don't forget to call the void in update. First, we will need to get the mouse position. So we will create new vector two, mouse position. But this is not just the mouse position. We need to get actually the position in the word position. So uh, because we will be using something called screen to word point, we will need to add variable for our camera. And now I can say that the mouse position is equal to cam dot screen toward point, which will basically just take a uh, position of the mouse on the screen and convert it to the word position. So we will input the input that mouse position. And like that, we should have the mouse position in the word. Now we need to calculate the angle to which we want to rotate the wand. So this can be float angle. And now we will use the math f and the function a10 2 in which we will need to import two values so the first one will be the mouse position that y and we need to subtract from this the want game object position so i will create new variable type of game object which will be the want game object Actually, this will not be the wand, but it will be the wand pivot. So to the 8 and 2, we will get the mouse position that Y, and from it, we will subtract the wand game object that transform that position that Y, and we will do the same thing for the X. So we will do mouse position that X minus wand game object that transform that position that X. So now we should have the angle but we obviously need to multiply it by the mathf that radians to degrees. Now, as we have the angle, we should be able to easily set the rotation. So want game object that transform that rotation equals, and because the rotation is in the quaternion, we will use quaternion that Euler. We will create new vector three because the rotation is in vector three. And here we will just import the angles, so 0, 0, and the Z angle is actually the angle, like this. So don't forget that the wand game object is actually the wand pivot. And I will also change the order in layer for the wand so that it, will, it is in the foreground. Now we can see that it is rotating, uh, the rotation is a bit off. So what we can do is just turn off the game. And I can see that it needs to be 90 degrees to the right. 
So I will just take the wand and rotate it 90 degrees to the right and I will just need to align it with the pivot. Yeah, and now it is looking exactly where I am pointing with my mouse. Now the last thing that we will code today will be the shooting. So I will add it into the void aim and shoot. And here we will create new if and we will get the input that get mouse button. We can use this one because we want to activate it even when we are holding it down. And it will be the zero, so the left mouse button. And we will need to create some condition uh, when we can actually shoot because uh, if we would have it just on the get mouse button down, then we could shoot all the time. So we will need to create some kind of cooldown. I will create bool and call it can shoot. And from start, we want to make it true that we can shoot from the start. So I will just edit here. And how do we actually set this bool? For this, I will use something called coroutines. If you are not familiar with them, uh, it just allows you to add some time into it so that we can just wait some time and then set the can shoot to two once more. So how do we create the coroutine? It is pretty simple. We will just create something called I enumerator. We can call it shooting cooldown. And here what we will just do when we start the coroutine we will set the can shoot to false and after we wait some time so for the waiting of the time we need to use yield, return, new and wait for seconds which you can't use in the update, the wait for seconds and we can just wait let's say one second and after we have done waiting we can set the can shoot to true once again so when we press the button and we can shoot we will start the coroutine, which we call shooting cooldown. Don't forget to add the parentheses here. And we will just set the can shoot to false. And after we have waited, we will set it to true once more. So how do we do the shooting? We will just instantiate some game object. So game object ballet is equal to instantiate. And here we will instantiate the object first. We will need to create prefab for it. So for the bullet, I will just create new 2D object, sprites, and some basic circle. Now you can easily drag the bullet into your folder. So we have prefab from it. And in the script, I will add variable for the bullet prefab. I will also add new empty object, which will be just parent for the all of the bullets and also create a variable for it. So bullet parent. Now when we are instantiating the object, we will first import the bullet prefab. Then we can add the bullet parent that transform because it is a game object. And we also need the position where we want to instantiate it. I could obviously do it uh, somewhere in the wand, like in the middle. But I think it is better to instantiate it somewhere at the end. I will create another empty object under the want object, which will be just the want end. And I will move it here and create another variable for it. So this is type of transform. Here we will set the position which is the want and transform that position. Then we also need the rotation, which will be the same as rotation of the want pivot. So want game object that transform that rotation. And then because we want to make the bullet move, I will go to the bullet prefab and add the rigid body to the component to it. That way we can actually apply some force to it and make sure that you disable the gravity here. So as we have the bullet game object in this variable, I will just say bullet dot get component, which will be type rigid body 2D. 
and we can just add relative force. It is important that you add relative, which will actually take the rotation in count. And this will be just new vector two, and we will set the X to, let's say two and Y to zero. And then we can also specify the force mode and we can set it to impulse. And the last thing that we will do with the bullet is just to destroy it. So destroy bullet and we want to destroy it after let's say 10 seconds. And this should be all of the code for the movement, for rotating of the wand and also for shooting the bullets. Now make sure that you assign all of the values. Yeah, so the shooting works. After we wait for the one second, which is the cooldown, we shoot another bullet. I can obviously stop shooting them or I can just click and shoot them, it doesn't matter. Then we can easily add some enemies, which will get damaged by those bullets and so on. Just so that the game looks a bit better, I will just quickly jump into the real Seraph's last stand game and I will steal some of the textures and try to apply it into our Unity project. Okay, so as I'm in the game, I will just quickly press start and then print screen the map and we can turn it off now. Yeah, this looks the same as in the game, so now I will just add some colliders to it. I will do that using the Polygon Collider 2D, so I can add as many points as I want. Yeah, so now it looks a bit more like Seraph's last stand. In the next videos we will add some enemies, some better graphics, health, upgrades and all of that stuff that you would want. I hope that you found this video useful. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye!